So assuming you have short-term or maybe long-term memory, I'm not sure which one this qualifies as, you're gonna remember, uh, we made this Lord of the Rings ring thing in the last tutorial, and not to pat myself on the back too much, because it might bruise myself, I don't want that. Uh, this is a pretty good looking ring, right? It looks super realistic, however, uh, if we were to take this project file as we left it and hit render, uh, you're gonna see it looks like this, which looks fine, but that is nowhere near as good as the render that I showed you last time, uh, where it's spinning, there's like a shallow depth of field and glow, and in general, it just looks different dope as fuck. So uh, this tutorial is not about how to make the ring. We already talked about it. It's how to take uh, something like this and make it look dope in the render. And you can apply this to a whole bunch of different stuff. So uh, starting off with this project file that you either made or you got via Patreon or you have your own project, here's what we're going to do. First of all, we want to take this object and add a, a bit of rotation animation, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Uh, to do this, I'm going to go to look dev mode just so we can see what we're doing uh, super clearly uh, without any lag. I'm going to keyframe the rotation on frame one on frame Frame 120 I decided and I trimmed this to 119 since we're gonna make this uh, seamless uh, but point is on frame 120 your last frame I'm just gonna make this 360 degrees on the z-axis so now it's rotating um, just like that and then we also want it to be on a axis so you can just rotate it like this uh, 25 degrees is fine any other numbers also fine fun fact uh, Earth's uh, rotation is 23 and a half degrees on its axis. If you want something like that, uh, you could do it like that. So uh, 25 degrees on the first and the last keyframe, so it stays like that and it's rotating. Um, however, you're going to notice that the interpolation is really weird. It's speeding up and slowing down, and that's just strange, right? Uh, to fix this, uh, you take these keyframes, you select all of them, so A, and then you hit T for interpolation. I don't know why it's T, but that's just the way it is. Deal with it. Uh, you hit T, you set this to linear, and then it's going to have a linear or constant speed okay and this is what's going to make it look like it's spinning forever again we made the frame on 120 uh, even though it ends at 119 because otherwise frame 120 the last one and the first one would look identical right so it'd look like it's stuttering a frame uh, so there we go now we have the uh, rotation part of this down with linear interpolation uh, next is shallow depth of field and this is really going to sell the effect especially if you have a small object like a ring uh, to do this you're going to select your camera and I know all this is simple stuff but really it, it adds uh, together believe me uh, you take your camera you enable depth of field and uh, this is like your camera properties in real life f-stop is basically saying what is the range of this depth of field in some sense so a small number is going to have a super shallow depth of field just like that and a big number almost everything is going to be in focus uh, I'm going to start with something like one so some stuff's in and out of focus, maybe even a half. And uh, we need to set our focal distance. In other words, where is the focal plane? What is in focus? Uh, we need to set this to the front of the ring. Again, go to look dev mode so we can uh, do this fast. And you just start dragging this number in the direction that makes everything in focus, just like that. And then we want to zoom in and make this number super precise um, until it's like perfectly sharp and then stops boring. So something like this, okay? Um, in other words, uh, our front of the ring is in focus, the back of it isn't. And when we go to this, uh, you can kind of see that. This is in focus, this isn't. And then at this point, we can just make this effect more intense, uh, making sure that the focal plane stays in the same spot. In fact, that is guaranteed. Um, how much you want to do this is dependent on you. I like to go a bit crazy with it, but uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seems to be good for me. Okay, uh, cool. So now we have the spinning, uh, we have the depth of field, and now finally what's going to make it look sick is the uh, compositing. Uh, before we do any compositing, right, with the nodes and stuff like this, you're going to notice even if we connect a, a viewer, it's only going to load in the last render that I talked about before. It's not going to update, right? Uh, to have this update, just go to whatever frame you want. For me, that's going to be frame one, although you could go to whatever frame. Uh, go to that frame, and then we're going to re-render with F12. Um, again, you don't need to, you know, I don't know why I'm saying again as if I've already told you this, but uh, your sample count doesn't matter too much while doing compositing. You just want to get a rough look for, a rough feel for what it looks for, and then you can always up the sample count later, okay? Um, so at this point, we have our new render layers image uploaded uh, in compositing, right? This is what we rendered here. Um, and here's the trick to make it look good. Uh, before you do anything, enable OpenCL. I got a bunch of comments telling me to enable this since I kept complaining that compositing was too slow. Apparently this helps. Um do that, and then the uh, point is, here's how uh, we make it look good. First of all, I always add in an alpha overnode uh, to begin with. This is just to give it a background color, and of course, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure your render layers is not in the background, right? Because then the color is gonna be on top. Um, make sure it's in the foreground, right? This way we can actually pick our background color, whatever you want it to be. And uh, usually the thing I do for this, so this is the dirty little secret. I don't tell this to nearly anybody, but uh, I pick a kind of bluish color with low saturation, and then I take the value and then start bringing it 
down like a whole lot till it's like nearly black so like 0.01 or something like that um, and sometimes even darker like I divide this by two etc um, first thing I do is again make a, a background color again you don't want it to be perfectly black because uh, it doesn't look as good um, in my opinion although maybe you want that I like a bit of bluish gray um, and then the rest of this is just a bunch of uh, glares and stuff like that here's how we do it uh, first of all, you're going to want to add in a glare node. We're actually going to end up uh, using two of these, but for now, um, attach uh, what we've made so far, including the background. Although technically you could do it uh, without it, but whatever. I'm going to connect everything um, into the glare node, um, and this is going to give it a bit of a glow, and we can control the uh, properties of that, etc. Uh, first of all, iterations bring that up. That's just going to be the amount of streaking. Um, second of all, the threshold, bring that down. That's going to make it so that more of the image is allowed to, grow, uh, to glow. In other words, the threshold is saying what is the uh, minimum requirement uh, for something to glow. If it's a low requirement, uh, more stuff glows. So bring that down even more. Um, cool. Uh, I'm going to take the mixing and bring it up to one. So now we've isolated that glow. And then I'm just going to do the same thing uh, for another. Okay. Uh, so second glare node connected here. Uh, this version I'm going to set to a different type of glow. So we're kind of we're going to kind of like stack these one after another after another. Uh, fog glow is what's going to give it a very nice uh, look. And for this one, bring up the size all the way, which I think is nine. And for the threshold, bring it pretty much as low as you can, uh, just so the background uh, doesn't end up glowing. So maybe like 0.04 or something. Okay, cool. Um, now to overlay, um, you know, this with our uh, two glares, uh, what you can do, I guess there's technically a bunch of methods, but usually uh, we're going to do a mix RGB and make sure that's what's being viewed. Set this to addition because every time we're adding in light, so like, you know, this is light that we're going to be adding in. Um, addition or screen is the way you want to do that. So take this, add in our first glare, which is going to look like uh, once it's actually uh, loaded and being viewed. It's going to look like this, uh, by the way. We can make it more intense with this factor. Uh, so you can make the glow hella intense, whatever you want. Uh, take this, add in another addition, and add in the uh, second glare. And this is going to add in kind of like the uh, glowing molten lava kind of look. No spoilers uh, for the end of the movie, by the way. <laughs> uh, this one you can also increase uh, the factor of. And uh, at this point, what we've done, again, is we've taken our original image, the original one, added in a background, added in the first glare with a factor we can control, and then added in a second uh, fog glow. Okay. Uh, next, what I like to do, and this is pretty much the last step, so lastly, uh, what I do, I add in a lens distortion node right here, um, and then you can crank this up to like a big number. Um, basically, what this is going to do is it's going to distort the lens as if the camera was with a curved uh, glass in the lens. Uh, you want to have a lot of uh, dispersion, and it's also going to do chromatic aberration, stuff like that. You want to crank this up and then also enable fit, uh, so it adds a bit of a uh, curvature. You can see what it's doing here is it's separating the white light into its uh, red, green, and blue kind of frequencies. I don't know what the correct word for this is. And uh, don't be scared of making this too high, but do be scared of making it extremely high because that's when it starts like uh, breaking the image and stuff like that. So maybe 0.2 is enough, okay? Uh, so, so far in this chain, uh, background, glares, lens distortion, and finally, uh, since we're rendering this not yet exported as a PNG or something that uh, doesn't have all the exposure stuff baked in, uh, we can still mess around with the exposure and gamma. Uh, just to get different looks on the fly. This doesn't take any additional processing power, right? Or, I mean, it does, but it doesn't take any time to update. Um, and in general, uh, what I did at this point is I, you know, use this uh, network, this uh, node network that we made here, and I rendered out every uh, single frame, and then I did, like, a second shot where we zoomed in and stuff like that. But this is the basic node network uh, to make everything look good. Um, you want to play around with this and make sure that, you know, it doesn't look hella intense, like, just a bit, because it is magical. Uh, but nothing crazy, and uh, yeah, that's the essence of how I make it look good, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See ya!